Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing this absolutely gorgeous formation that you see right here that represents an enormous shockwave. With our own galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, sort of visible right there in the upper right corner. Although that's just for comparison because this object is approximately 700 million light years away from us, but stretching over a distance of over 6.5 million light years, or nearly 70 times as big as our own galaxy. And this particular shockwave, just like many other shockwaves we've seen before, was formed as a result of two huge galactic clusters colliding together and producing these effects. Something we've seen a lot in other galaxies, and something that even helped us understand that, well, there's this mystery we refer to as dark matter. And it seems to be visible in this cluster known as the bullet cluster. The mass distribution you see here seems to indicate that there's some unusual mass present that seems to have passed through the galaxies without interacting. Suggesting, of course, that there is some kind of a dark matter in this particular cluster. But obviously we have no idea what it is. But in this case, this was the most detailed radio analysis of such an unusual structure ever done, and it was done specifically to try to understand how these structures form, how they evolve, and also help us understand what happens when really, really huge massive structures in the universe collide with one another. With all of this being detected using the network of telescopes in South Africa known as the Meerkat. And in this particular case, we're looking at a very large galactic cluster, the cluster of many different galaxies, known as Abel 3667. The structure that you can kind of see right there in the middle, that does look like a single galaxy, although in reality, consists of over 500 various galaxies, just sort of all clustered together. And when these clusters collide, they tend to produce really large shock waves, where a lot of different electrons end up being accelerated to really high velocities. Like we're talking about near the speed of light velocities. And when these tremendously fast-moving particles start to interact with some of the magnetic fields present in the region, usually from various interactions from gas or from other magnetic particles, they start producing emissions visible in radio waves. And that's pretty much exactly what we're looking at right here. And if I were to zoom in, you can actually even sort of see the motion of all of these different particles as they move around various magnetic lines where all these electrons moving really fast are accelerated, decelerated, and also interact with other magnetic fields. Although in this particular case, we don't actually see the motion. The motion was added by the scientists behind the paper. But we do see the filaments and we do see the actual formations. But because of the distances involved here, all of this would take thousands, if not millions of years, to move from one location to the other. But one of the main reasons these types of structures are sort of important to study for a lot of different cosmologists is actually because it helps us understand how various galaxies and objects in the universe interact, evolve, and influence one another. For example, we know that typical galaxies usually follow along the so-called filament of the cosmic web. And they also tend to form these very large clusters in the middle that we tend to refer to as galactic clusters. You can sort of see them as these really large knots everywhere. And so trying to understand how exactly these clusters interact and sort of move around and how they then collide, possibly forming something larger, helps the scientists figure out where the universe is headed and how it evolved in the last 13.8 billion years. And in this particular case, these are very powerful collisions, with actual velocities, collision velocities, being approximately 1500 kilometers per second. And because they end up producing these extremely large shock waves, it allows the scientists to potentially assess exactly what happens in the intercluster and intergalactic medium and try to figure out some of the other mysteries of the universe we still don't really understand. With Abel 3667 being close enough to us and massive enough to actually be a perfect target for a lot of these different studies. And so the detection and the confirmation of these magnetic lines in this particular shockwave was a pretty big discovery from this recent study. And also the size of the object itself is absolutely ginormous. But all of this also connects to this other study from not so long ago that decided to investigate the cosmic filament and specifically how exactly it helps evolve various galaxies. Because there seems to be a connection between where the galaxy is located in the filament and what happens to that galaxy at that particular time. And that's of course because we already know that the cosmic filament or the cosmic web plays a really big role in determining where all of these galaxies are headed and how they interact with one another. But precisely how the interaction happens and what influence the actual filament has on the galaxies is not understood just yet. 
And so in this case, another study focused on a nearby Virgo cluster, the very famous cluster relatively close to us, 65 million light years away, that contains about 1500 different galaxies. The cluster that suggests that some of the galaxies, the ones that have a lot of other galaxies around them, or essentially galaxies in denser space, seem to be always elliptical or mostly elliptical in shape, sort of looking like this. But at the same time, most of these galaxies generally do not produce many stars. They're actually more or less dead in terms of the production of stars. And so there is some kind of a correlation here that the scientists wanted to investigate. And in this case, in total, they studied approximately 7,000 different galaxies and 250 of them were big enough where they could actually estimate the total amount of gas in them while also measuring other properties like, for example, size, age, and so on. And using the analysis, they've discovered that, well, indeed, there seems to be some sort of a correlation between the type of a galaxy and the location in the cosmic web. In other words, you are going to more or less find similar galaxies in one location of a cosmic filament, but you're going to find different types of galaxies in a slightly different location, with all of these properties more or less changing as you move across the filament specifically changing as the galaxies move from more or less isolated space to more chunky areas with a lot more density and a lot more neighbors. And the main implication here is that, well, the filament seems to be a kind of a transitional environment where different galaxies are sort of processed before falling into a typical galactic cluster. I guess sort of like a conveyor belt of some sorts. So as they move along the actual filament, they change, they transform, and then they arrive to their final destination, which is the galactic cluster. And once they reach the galactic cluster, that's when the star formation seems to stop. And so that's a pretty intriguing discovery, if it's confirmed, of course, because it suggests that galaxies that still produce stars may still be moving through the filament and have not yet reached the middle of the galactic cluster, with the elliptical galaxies appearing more frequently in the clusters, while also possessing a lot less different types of hydrogen. Whereas on the outskirts, outside of the galactic cluster, only about 20% of similar galaxies were located in these regions. And this is actually true of Virgo cluster they've looked at in more detail. And so this of course implies that this particular filament, or actually all of the cosmic filament, doesn't just guide galaxies, it also to some extent helps them evolve maybe, or change, or transform, or maybe even uh, change different properties. Obviously right now nobody really knows exactly what happens and what the actual changes are, but that's the correlation they found from their study that you can find in the description below. Either way though, really interesting studies, really cool discoveries, really incredible pictures, and definitely some new understanding of these unusual formations and these really massive structures. But I'm sure we'll find out more about this because there have been quite a lot of different studies using these radio telescopes that have already discovered so much and you can learn more about these different discoveries in some of the previous videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.